You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. HRN is food radio supported by you. Learn more at heritageradionetwork.org. Westholm is working with the land to create nature-led Australian Wagyu. Westholm believes that when nature leads, flavor follows. Learn more at westholm.com. Well, welcome to Pizza Quest. I'm Peter Reinhardt. And today I am here with Scott Dealey. He's coming to us from the UK. So we're crossing the pond today, uh, which is one of those miracle things you can do with Zoom. And uh, and I want to dig in with him today on his new book. Uh, when I was at Pizza Expo the last couple of weeks, you know, we connected there. But the thing that really... I guess I wasn't expecting the one most surprising thing at Expo that I saw was the the large presence of the Uni Oven. And yeah. Scott is a brand ambassador and the author of a new book, The Uni Pizza Project, which you can also track on on Scott's uh, Instagram, the Scott it's Scott's Pizza Project, I think is the uh uh, the at, at Scott's Pizza Project on, on Instagram. And we'll hear more about that in a second. But that's what I want to hear about, Scott. You've written this book. I want to know, love to find out how you became a brand ambassador for them and came to write this book. And what else? Give us a little bit of uh, sort of the, the backstory of how this all came to be. Okay. Well, yeah. So it all started, um, well, it was the first um, lockdown of the, the recent pandemic. So in it was April 2020, so pretty much three three years ago this week is when I got my first um, pizza oven, my Uni pizza yeah. oven. I got, it, I got it for a birthday present. Um, it's it's a funny story, really, because I'd never I'd never really had any interest in making pizza before that. Um, so it was a very random gift. <laughs> uh, which Man. took me by which took me by surprise. Uh, a lot has happened in three years, three short years from just starting your first to having a, a a beautiful book loaded with great photos, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's pretty fast work. Yeah, it's been a it's been a whirlwind to say the least. Yeah, so <laughs> I just I just got really. I think the words I used in the book it it. it ignited a passion I didn't realize that I had um so like I say previously I'd never really made a pizza or had any interest I've always enjoyed eating pizza but there's there's not been who doesn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there was there was obviously a, a something in there that getting my uni pizza oven just just started off and then yeah I just got really into it um and I think it helped having like a because I I worked my full time job I worked throughout the the lockdowns and the pandemic so but I had doing the pizzas with the pizza oven I think it gave me a bit of an escape from what was going on in the world um, at the time. So it are was you quite still a, working? Are you still do you still have what we'll call a day job? Or are you yeah, now yeah. full time uni ambassador out there? No, I'm I'm very much still working full time. Um so the my pizza stuff is still very much uh, in the hobby category really. Um so I, I tend to do it at weekends if I can, but it's quite difficult juggling everything because I've got a I'm married with a twelve year old daughter as well, so juggling Juggling everything is is quite difficult, but a full life. And and again, as you said, you weren't really. It's not like you've been playing around with pizza for the last ten years and finally kind of made a breakthrough. You just jumped into the deep end. When, as we say, went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and, yeah. But I'm still very going. quickly started putting out looks like some extraordinary pizzas. I mean, the pizzas in your book, if you know, in just the the, the short amount of time that you've had to not only write the book, but, you know, kind of develop this whole menu. These are beautiful pizzas. So how, how did that come together and how, how long did it take you to kind of figure out your techniques? Yeah. So, well, I think it's the type of personality and person that I am. When I, when I do something, I, I, I like to do a lot of research before I actually to do it. So it wasn't a case of me getting the oven three years ago and just, 
getting it out of the box, starting it up and just going for it. I did I did a lot of research into it, really YouTube, really, um, and using like the, the stuff that Uni had out there as well. Because um, I wasn't on any, I didn't have any Instagram account or anything at this point. Um, this was very much, I was just making a couple of pizzas for the family at the weekend and then I, I just got a real thirst for it and I, I thought, for my first few pizzas that I made, like I thought they were pretty good and like they were like nothing I'd ever tasted before, really. Um, Interesting. So yeah, and it, it just evolved from there, and I just put more research into it. Started my own um, Instagram account, which is the Scotts Pizza Project, which you referred to. Um, yeah. So you, you you kind of can chronicle the progress of your. Of yeah, your, very very much so. Yeah. Pizza work. Yeah. And, it, and that's when it really lifted and kicked off. Really, um, I got a lot of I got a, a lot of growth very early on on that, um, and connected with a lot of people, and just kept just kept going at it and, and trying different things and make, making mistakes as, as you have to do. Um, yeah, of course. Is there a network of people out there? I mean, through does Uni have a site where there were people who like you are kind of uh, enthusiasts and not professionals, but enthusiasts are communicating with each other and sharing knowledge. Is that how you kind of pushed yourself up to the next run? Yeah, massively. There's so the the online community, particularly on Instagram. I don't. Um, they've got Facebook pages as well, um, but I was very much honed into the to the Instagram side of it because I, I liked getting the photos out there. Um, and showing showing what I was doing and documenting the things I was doing. So yeah, I, qu I quickly started connecting with a, well thousands and thousands of other people that were the same as me, doing the same thing and trying to learn and get better. And and I've made a lot of a lot of friends through it. A lot a lot of them who I've never met before. Yeah, uh, you kind but, of stumbled into your own tribe of of yeah fellow uni you know users but and that of course goes beyond uni then i'm sure that there's other people yeah. writing to you or who are using something else maybe they have a, a rock box or maybe they have uh, nothing maybe they're baking in their home oven um yeah very so. much so the, the it's not it's not like um like you say it's not just narrow to the 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 model of oven you're using it's very much a broad community that that everyone helps each other and connects with each other and but like i say a, a lot of the people who i consider as very good friends who <laughs> i've never met i mean i met quite a lot of people at expo like when yeah. we met yeah for the first time, that's what was i was going to ask you is uh, what, what your experience was like at pizza expo you know coming across being first of all i was stunned to see what a big presence uni made from being a few years ago, pretty much, you know, sort of under the radar, uh, sounded like sort of a fun hobbyist tool, and then suddenly becoming. They had a booth at Expo. They had people working in the booth making pizzas. They had all these brand ambassadors, you know, walking around. What was that like? Yeah, it was. It was a very um, surreal. I mean, I loved it. It was a brilliant experience, um, and I'm so glad I got the opportunity to do it. But it was very. Very surreal, like walking into the, the big arena for the yeah. first was very, I was kind of like in awe of everything. It was just a moment of, I remember walking in on the first day when it first opened and just standing there and looking around thinking, because I had no idea of the scale of it. Like, yeah. and it was just enormous. It's um, stunning. I mean, yeah. You wouldn't think that the ten thousand people would show up for, for you know a pizza themed event, but it's it's yeah. everybody. Every it's just like like I say, the larger tribe of pizza freaks, you know, that all gather, yeah. and then the subgroups within that, you know. And uh, any any um, surprises? Did you work in the booth? By the way, were you making pizzas as uh, in their booth? Yeah, I got involved in doing like a live demo. Like there was, it was really, it was really good. There was quite a few of us who were there, um, and then we just kind of like all got involved and and started making pizzas and showing the public how to use the ovens. And it was, it was really good. And and like I had the other, 
objective of trying to sell my books as well while I was there. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was, it, like I say, it was just a fantastic experience and uh, I, I had a th- really good time. Did you get a chance to watch some of the pizza competition that was going on and see what, uh, you know, what was happening over there and get any ideas from what you saw? Yeah, I did. I, I, the first day, I mean, the, I think the last, I was only there for the first two days of the expo. I didn't catch the last day because I had to fly back. But the the second day, I spent a lot of time at the competition area because I was with a few people who were actually competing themselves. Mm. So it was it was really great to to watch them compete and like cheering them on. And then we were doing Instagram live videos, like all of us together. It was it was really good. But yeah, watching people compete, you, it it shows there's like a serious element to it as well. Especially the when the Neapolitan pizza competition started. That yeah, that that, that was quite. A, a shift in um, the environment. It got quite serious, like really quickly. Oh yeah. Well, when there's prize money involved and bragging yeah. rights and all sorts of, and, you know, trips to Italy and all sorts of things, you know, there, there's a lot at stake in these pizza competitions. And and uh, I've had a chance in the past to be a judge. So I, yeah. to me, it's a great way to see kind of like, what are some of the new coming trends that, uh, you know, might not be mainstream yet, but will happen in the future. Yeah, because the, the, the t- two of the guys I was with were competing in the non-traditional category. So that is literally do do anything you want. Like so, yeah. it was really, that was really not good to watch. Like some of the different things that people were doing and the different styles. A lot of there was a lot of Detroit styles going into the competition and pan pizzas. Um, but yeah, it was it was great. L- really enjoyed it, and and I, I liked the watching the demos as well. So um, I managed to get to Tony Gemignani's and John Arena's demo. Fantastic. And Tony, very, he was brilliant. He was very kindly um, asked me if I wanted to sell copies of my book after his demo alongside him selling all his wow. merch. How nice. Yeah, were you that was... Books? Were, was, was the merch table working for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gifted quite a lot of books. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, so I mean, standing next to Tony, um, selling yeah. my book was quite a <laughs> very, surreal, very surreal moment, and and it made me laugh. Tony had to give me a bit of a pep talk. Um, I was, he'd he told everyone about my book during during the demo, um, and then we were both stood there, and there were queues of people, and I was standing there a bit like rabbit in the headlights. And, yeah. It'd be like uh, it'd be like my, my a local band standing next to uh, Bono's, you know, selling their CDs. <laughs> Tony, Tony like gave me a nudge and said, "Come on, you need to you need to sell yourself." <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah, that's it. and and he's a great mentor for that kind of stuff. He, he and he's taught a lot of people how to kind of come out out of their shell, so to speak, you know, and uh, and stand up there and and own it. <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been a fantastic help for me. Um, I, I, I managed to meet him last year when I went to San Francisco on holiday, um, and since then he's just been like we've stayed in we've stayed in contact, and and it was his idea for me to sell books alongside him. So he, he really helped me. Um, uh, and such a generous person yes. with his time. Um, yes, he, he is really generous and has helped a lot of people and it's great that you were able to connect with him. Um did while you were there watching the competition, any thoughts about possibly entering next year? Yeah, a few people asked me about that. Um I think I'd I think I would like to do it at some point. Maybe whether whether or not next year it, well, whether or not I can get out there next year, because obviously yeah, it's, so it's, it's, quite it's a big thing. it's a big commitment to fly all the way over <clears throat> and then spend a few days in Las Vegas. It's a lot of money involved, if nothing else. Uh, when we come back from the break in a few minutes, I want to get into some of these specific pizzas because I got the book here, it's a great book, which you published yourself, right? I mean, you did all the work on this, you did the photos, and, and yes, uh, it was through a publisher. But yeah, I did. I wrote the book myself, and my my wife actually did all the photography in the book. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, we want to talk about some of those pizzas because you, there's a lot of creativity in here and some classics, but it seems like you would be 
an ideal candidate to enter the Neapolitan category. The question would be for me, and um, maybe we can explore that when we come back and we'll talk more about working specifically with the oven, is, um, you know, would you be able to execute it in a different oven, not yours, not the one that you have, not your uni, but maybe whatever it is that they're using, you know, on the floor, uh, could be another brand. And uh, if, if, if you've had a chance to play around with that at all. Um, yeah. So that's something that, uh, before you before you come back and compete next year, practice in somebody else's oven, because you don't know what you're going to, you know, they're not going to let yeah. you use your oven, you know, which would be yeah. Would be, would be cool. Um, but uh, I did want to ask you about Uni. So they're there selling, they have a booth, which means they're trying to sell ovens. Are they selling ovens to the home baker or do are they now moving into the professional category, trying to get pizzerias also to utilize their, their uh, you know, their ovens? I think it's still very much targeted at the home pizzeria, uh, the home pizza maker. Um, that that I think that's always been their their target audience. Uh-huh. Um, but I think people have more and more started to use them a bit more commercially with like pop ups, um, rather rather than in like a brick and mortar type scenario. I think a lot of people use, particularly their gas ovens, um, for 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 pop ups. Um, but yeah, I think very much they're still targeting the home, the home pizza maker. So that's an interesting because I, I didn't get a chance to get over to the booth. I spent the whole time at our table recording podcasts with everybody else, and I missed <laughs> getting a chance to walk around the whole floor and seeing what was going on. Uh, so I didn't get to see that you know those ovens in action. But I was wondering if they had any plans to build out to larger, maybe more durable, you know, professional industry level ovens, or if that if that's not the the business plan uh to, to to be quite honest I, i'm not sure i mean as as an as an ambassador we do get to hear about things earlier than the general public but that's not something i've heard heard of well let's let's talk about that ambassadorship then because there were like i've met at least six or seven people who introduced themselves as brand ambassadors you know for owning which means which was impressive because that meant they would really put some effort into you know, getting the word out. It's a very, it was, I thought, a very ambitious marketing plan. What does it mean to be an ambassador and how does someone become one? So I became an ambassador after about a year after I started my my journey, so to speak. Um, So it's very much a case of you have to, you have to just be yourself through your Instagram or Facebook account, whatever it is you're running, um, and just be yourself. And I never, I always had an ambition to do something in connection with the brand because I liked them as a brand. I liked how the values they stood for and and how they operated as a business. But I didn't specifically think, right, I want to be a brand ambassador. Um, I knew I wanted to have some affiliation with them. So like I said, I, I just was myself. I, I really like to help people um, with their pizza making and especially people who are a bit earlier on in their journey than what I was. Like anyone I could pass on my knowledge and experience that I've developed over the time. So I think they saw that in me and, and liked that. Um, so what are the obligations of an ambassador? Um, so, yeah, so when... You basically have to. Well, that is all they said to me was really is we want you to carry on doing what you're currently doing. Um, we want you to help promote the brand and help as many people as you can. And there's certain obviously obligations you have to fulfil with promoting them across your social media and showing their products and stuff um, and how to use them. But it, the the word. The message I got was, "We want you to carry on doing what you were doing." Really, we just want—they just wanted to recognize the fact that I was doing a good job. Really. So you were, yeah, you were already an ambassador, even if you weren't officially one, because you were using their oven and and enthusiastic about what it is you were doing. So what? And so obviously, they would love to have you know your ambassadorships. Do they do they compensate you in any way for doing that, or did they help you with the book? What are the things that they give back to you as a brand ambassador? Yeah, so as a brand ambassador, you get like a monthly, um, it's classed as a retainer fee. Um, wow, nice. 
to for for like the the promotional stuff that you do for them and to help help get the word out. Um, with regards to the book, um, it's actually the book isn't actually officially done with Uni. It's an it's an unofficial book. Um, but did they have to give you permission to use their name in the title? Yeah. So as because I was an because I was a brand ambassador already and I had a contract with them, I had to gain their their approval basically. Yeah. Um, if I wasn't a brand ambassador, I don't think I would have needed to. I think there are. I think you are allowed to do things unofficially. Um, but I wanted to. I wouldn't have wanted to do anything without their their say so. And their really, approval. it's a win win for them and for you. You get a. You know, you get to do your book. They get basically free publicity. You know, I, and, and, and because it's a beautiful book, you know, the it's it, it showcases them as well as you. Um, where are they based, by the way? Are they out of uh, uh, Italy, or where, where, where's Uni from? It's actually uh, it originated in um, Scotland. So Scotland, great really? Yeah. So, so, so I, I know very little about. I just, I've, I've, my friends have them. I've seen, I've had pizzas from them, but I, I didn't know anything about the company. Yeah, so their 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 owners, Darina and Christian, are a, a married couple. Darina is Scottish, and Christian is from Finland. Oh. Uh, but they they developed the the company in Scotland and now like obviously they've got they're all over the world now they've got a big office in uh, Texas. No uh, kidding! Wow, it's growing like crazy. Were they at the expo? Uh, no, the uh, Darina and Christian. Yeah. No, no, they weren't. Uh, it was just some of the American team that run the American side of it. You know, it's a pretty amazing story. I think there's got to be. It's got to be a story worth telling, you know. Uh, yeah. Are they working on their own book or like sort of a, the official Uni storybook, or is it would it be on the website? Uh, they have got they have got their own cookbook, but it's more. It's called Cooking with Fire. It's not. It's a bit. It's not really a pizza book. It's kind uh -huh. of like uh, all different types of food and how and and things like that, rather than kind of like where I've focused on on it. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, it's one of those uh, almost seems like a unicorn story of, you know, uh, uh, taking a simple idea and then having it blow up and become uh, a global trend. And so it must be exciting to kind of be riding along with that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a great journey so far. It's um, like I said, I've been an ambassador two years and it's been it's been really good. Obviously, the last 12 months or so has been I've been obviously heavily focused on yeah. firstly creating the book and then promoting it and getting it out there and, and releasing it. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a great journey so far. Well, why don't we take a little break? When we come back from the break, um, we'll get into the book itself and we can talk about some of the pieces you've created and so maybe talk about some of the techniques that you've either developed or derived from your research and your study. And uh, you will dive into the uh, Uni Pizza Project book by Scott Dealey and uh, join us in part two of our conversation with Scott when we come back. Whether you're a chef or just love going to restaurants, you know the best ingredients are everything, especially when it comes to beef. In Northern Australia, there's a different approach to raising high quality beef. West Home, based in Queensland and Northern Territory, is working with the land to create nature-led Australian Wagyu. West Home stewards 16 million acres of rangeland guided by their natural ecosystem. They're led by a belief that if they balance the needs of their cattle with the needs of the environment, both can thrive. West Home's team of rangeland experts and nature managers use a variety of tools to monitor and respond to the welfare of the environment, like satellites that assess grass health, and on-the-ground research. Cattle are happier when they have the freedom to forage and explore, so West Home ensures that they can roam wild, foraging at will for the first two to three years of their lives. Their cows graze on native grasses like Mitchell grass, which is only found in Australia, along with dozens of other plants, herbs, and seasonal legumes. The result is a high-quality Wagyu beef that reflects the terroir of Northern Australia and a flavor suited to complement any cuisine. West Home believes that when nature leads, flavor follows. Learn more at westhome.com. 
Welcome back to Pizza Quest. I'm Peter Reinhardt. I'm here with Scott Daly. Scott, you're in the UK, but where in the UK are you? Uh, so I'm based in a place called Derby, which is very much uh, in the Midlands, very much in the centre of England. It must be a beautiful country there, huh? Yeah, some of the I'm um, I'm not in the um, in the countryside really, but there, we are close to some really really nice places where yeah, it's very picturesque. Well, we've been talking about the the book that you created, the Uni Pizza Project book, uh, and it's loaded with a number of recipes, including four different kinds of doughs, uh, but also because it is clearly a result of your working in an uni oven, very specific to working in that oven. Let's talk briefly about the oven itself before we talk about the pizzas. So, of course, one of the things that seems to be part of the driving forces and the charm of this uh, oven is that it's portable, it's it's small, it's 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 very, the design is incredible. It's very, you know, it's sort of, it's very, I don't know, contemporary, I guess is the right word to say, but I mean, it's, it's, it's here and now, and yet it works like a classic old style wood-fired brick oven. Yeah. And you're baking yeah. more, and you don't need wood necessarily to make it work though, huh? No, depending on the models. I mean, they've got some of the some of the models are gas only. Some of them um, are wood or coal, but you can buy um, a gas adapter to use that. So they're dual fuel. So they're really popular because it gives you the option of one or the other. Um, so really, it depend it depends what you want. I, of obviously, one of one of the most commonly asked questions is which what do I recommend? Um, but the first thing I always say is it depends really what fuel you want to use. If you're not, sh if you, if you set on using gas only, then I'd go along, so along the, the gas only models. But if, if you're not sure and you'd like to try wood or gas, then, then the, the, the dual fuel models are really good for that because it gives you the option of both. Well, so that in other words, you like uh, you can get get some that have the ability to go both ways. You can go with wood or gas or a hybrid of the two. Yeah, so so that one you're you're on there particular. That's the Carew sixteen, which it, you buy it as a wood charcoal oven, but you can you can buy a gas adapter to convert it to a gas oven as well. So that gives you the option of both, which is really popular. And if you're baking in gas, I think a lot of people feel that, you know, wood is so so important because you can get the oven hotter. But can you get with the gas fuel alone an oven as hot as you can with the wood? Yeah, the, the temperature range is exactly the same um, as really? if you were using wood. Yeah, so I just find it using gas is a bit more convenient because it gives you like a more constant source of heat. You're not having to manage the flame. Um yeah. So obviously, if you're using wood, you've always got to have one eye on the flame because obviously, especially if you're using making Neapolitan pizza, you need you need that roaring flame. Um, so, I think gas is quite uh, more convenient and it allows you to focus more on making the pizza. So if you're if you're new to pizza making and and you want to focus on the pizza making, maybe maybe gas is a good option to go down because what I found when I first started out. I started out with a wood, a wood fired oven, yeah. um, and I found it quite because obviously making a Neapolitan pizza, you, you're cooking in sixty seconds because of the yeah. high temperature. Um, and and as a new pizza maker, it can be you have to be careful. It can be quite stressful, like especially if you're making pizza after pizza, you've got to manage the flame as well but at the same time as topping. You it can be quite a chaotic and stressful yeah. experience. If you exactly, and, and it's and the the of course it's part of the fun. If you're you know really into the wood fire cooking, of course it's part of the joy of the whole process. But um, if you're trying to do it in volume, or you're trying to do, manage more than one or two pizzas at a time, uh, and manage the wood, uh, it's real convenient to be able to use the gas. Does it come with a built-in thermostat, or do you have to use like you know laser readers and things like that to get it? The the new the new models that have just been released come with a, an internal thermometer, um, but um, yeah, you use a laser infrared um, thermometer to check the stone temperature. And so it's pretty responsive. If you lower the heat, lower the gas, you can get down to the temperature you want in a relatively 
quick time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like I say, managing flame with the gas is <clears throat> is obviously a lot easier because you can just turn it down uh, Are, depending on the style of PC you're making. What's the capacity of the of the ovens as far as like how many how many ten to twelve inch pizzas can you manage at once in there? Well, they're very much like one one at a time. So one at a time. They either the the smaller the smaller models um, are twelve inch models, so you can get up to a twelve inch pizza. Whereas the larger models are where you can get up to sixteen inches. <clears throat> but still, just one pizza at a time. You wouldn't, wouldn't try to do two. Um, and no, course, I don't think the capacity again is because it's for home, mostly for home. You know, baking. It's uh, the enthusiasts were. Although I have seen some people use them, as you said, in in pop ups or maybe on food trucks. Like they'll they'll put them on the back of a three wheeler and and just yeah. fire them up. You know, and uh, uh, make two have, have, drive around with two or three of them so they can manage two or three pizzas at a time, but in three different ovens. Yeah, yeah. So you must be having fun with yours. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I, I, I generally do it because of working Monday to Friday. It's very much a weekend, a weekend thing, really. Um, so yeah, I just and and I still very much do it just for for me and the family, really. Um, yeah, it's not a business for you. It's just it's really yeah, just a passion definitely. project. Yeah, because I, I, people of, often ask me like, can you see yourself opening your own pizza place or doing it for a living? But I like to be I'm, – I'm very conscious that if it becomes a job, then yeah. like you might lose the fun, exciting element out of it, and I, and I really don't want to lose that. Um, I've, I've, I've managed to maintain that for three years now, so I think I've got a good balance between – obviously, I am making money from it, like through through being an ambassador and doing my book. And, yeah. And well, that's a – You've turned it into a side gig or a, a little yeah. we'll call side yeah. hack, but but uh, I think what seems to be driving the whole uni oven movement is that people are having fun with it. There's a there's always this aura of you know, people are excited. There's an excitement about this oven that seems to be that's differentiated it from maybe some of the competitors. At, at yeah, this, I think at this at this at this sort of portable oven realm. Yeah, and I think it's the same with everything. It's if you're doing something in your own time, it's got it's got to be fun. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. So yeah. I think, <laughs> and then, and I think the I think the pizza oven is very much. It seems, especially what I can see, it's kind of like replacing the barbecue. Like uh, yeah. more, and more, more and more people are getting pizza ovens all the time and, and dedicating we- with their families. But we were talking, you know, before we started recording about the fact that you're using your ovens for more than just pizzas. Obviously, we think of them as pizza ovens, but they're 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 wood fired or brick ovens that can be used for a lot of different things. So I know this book, your your first book here, is really about pizza. But are you, are you have any plans to do a follow up book that maybe says all the other things you can do with a, a small little portable uni oven? It's just a good question, actually. I mean. I'm not sure whether there'll be a follow-up book or not. I suppose. I suppose really it depends how well that one. Uh, well, what are some of the other things that you do to cook in your oven? So I th- probably the main the main other one that I use the oven for is probably steaks. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, you you can get some really good steak. In fact, they're probably the best steaks I've had coming out of the the uni oven using the cast iron pans. Um, I you know I have had the same experience with my wood fire oven, uh, which is a Forno Bravo. But it's the, maybe better than any steakhouse steak I've ever had are the steaks yeah. that come with that oven. Yeah, and, and and it doesn't end there. I mean, I've made so many different things in there. I mean, we I've, I've baked um, like banana loaves in there, or or skillet cookies, uh, all different things like that, and and everything just seems to <clears throat> be better cooked in there. Like no matter what it is, it, it it just seems to elevate it to to another level. Well, let's talk about some of these pizzas then, because you know you put together a book. How many pizzas are there in, in this? I didn't do a head count of the the number, uh, of recipes, but it looks like dozens. Four, Forty five recipes in total, and that's pretty substantial. Um, the number of and uh, does that include the doughs? Because you got four different pizza doughs. That that includes the dough. So the, there's four 
I think it's four dough recipes and then just over 40 actual pizza recipes. So I want to talk about the dough, of course, because I'm a dough guy, you know, but, uh, yeah. but before we do it, just uh, I'll jump ahead to that. The other thing that I like about the book is one sauce, one sauce recipe that is simple, easy to do and works on every kind of pizza. And, uh, you know, I kind of feel the same way. I, I, when I, when I came up with my sauce, I went, I don't need to come up with five different sauces, you know, for repeat this, this sauce works and I can tweak it yeah. as needed. But so talk a little bit about your sauce. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I, I like to keep. I mean, the recipe is called <clears throat> "Keep It Simple Salt." I mean, and I think that's what I've learned over time that some there's certain things that you don't need to overcomplicate. They're they they're better when you keep them simple. So don't get me wrong, I've gone down the route of adding all different herbs and and cooking the tomatoes and and doing certain different things, but. I've always just come back to my simple recipe, which is a good, a good can of good quality tomatoes, a pinch of salt, and I like to add um, some some finely chopped basil, and 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 that's it really. That's it. Um, yeah. Do you have a particular um, a, a particular brand of tomatoes that you like, or um, a, a, I'm sure you're preferring a plum or San Marzano style tomato. I find San Marzano uh, are the best. Um, is that tomatoes. the brand, the San Marzano brand of, of of tomatoes, or just that style? Just that style, really. I've not got a particular. There's there's a um, a good brand that we're getting over in the UK now called um, Mooty or Mutty. I'm not sure how. Uh -huh. to yeah, Mutty. Yep. They were. We saw them at the Pizza Expo. In fact, did yeah. you get a chance to walk around and see all the different tomatoes on display at the Pizza Expo? Yeah, yeah, I, I spent some time walking around and, and trying certain things, but but they're they're actually they do a can of tomatoes which has already kind of been reduced to a sauce consistency, uh -huh. which obviously makes it even easier. I mean, and yeah. and they're really they're a really good quality tomato as well. But I think the the recipe that I've got in the book uh, it can be used as like a base, and uh, like um a starter sauce as well. So I add on certain recipes, I'll I'll have that as my my go-to sauce and then I can yeah. add certain things to it. Like I actually like adding a little barbecue sauce in there and make it a tomato and barbecue base. Interesting. Nice. Yeah, it's really nice. So is that is the, is that one of the recipes in the book or one of the pizzas that call for that uh adaptation? Yeah. There's a there's a couple of pizzas in there that use that recipe, and you have a marinara pizza also, which is without cheese, and that yeah. one is starts with your basic sauce, but then you add additional herbs to it, right? Yeah. So with with the marinara, I like to uh, use the base sauce, and then I like to add finely sliced uh, garlic, a sprinkle of oregano, and and I, I actually like to use fresh basil on top as well, which some people will. Will, will shout at me for, um, but I, I just really like the flavor it adds to the adds to the pizza. Do you put that on before the bake or after the bake? With that one, I, I put it on before the bake because I think it, it intensifies the flavor. I read a tr in your book. There was a trick that I read that I I, I never actually had seen it before about uh, the way to keep the basil uh, green during the bake or how to, how to pr protect it during the bake. Was, was it? What was? Can you talk about what that technique was? Yeah, so all you need to do is um, just have it for a, for a short space of time before you're going to use it. Just put it in some um, salt water. Salt water. That was the th that was the thing that I never heard before. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you put it in some salt water and then top use it, it will prevent it from burning because obviously uh -huh. with the Neapolitan pizzas, the the temperatures are that high that you do have to be careful of things like basil burning and just setting on fire, basically. So. So you, so you put whole leaves, soak some whole leaves in, in salted water, and yeah. uh, and that protects it somehow. Yeah. So obviously, with if you're making a margarita, you would you would uh, normally add add the basil under the cheese, so it's being protected more. But obviously, with a marinara, it's being exposed to the to the full flames, so it does help protect it from from burning. So did, and now are these tricks that you learned just by doing or how did you how did you figure out this salt water trick for the basil and and uh, uh you know some of the other 
you have a golden tomato pizza in the book that I that looks really spectacular. And where did you come up with these ideas? Um, just just picking up on from from other people and reach. I mean, I don't claim to. I can't sit here and claim to have invented all these little tricks. I think it's just some of it is trial and error, but some of it is just piggybacking on on what you learn from other people, really. Some because there's another one with the same recipe actually. It's like garlic instead of slicing it up and, and putting it on raw then you actually just soak it in in olive oil beforehand and that that coating of olive oil will do the same thing it'll protect it from curling up and burning i see well i, I jumped ahead of the dough so let's go back to talk about those um <clears throat> you've got you know your, your classic um neapolitan dough uh which is i'm just going back through these here it's um it's just flour, double zero flour in particular. Um, yeah. Dried, very small amount of dried yeast. I, I love the fact that you're just really practically just putting a pinch of yeast in here, and then not, and then just letting them ferment at room temperature, not necessarily overnight unless unless needed. Um, yeah. Water and salt. That's it. So it's yeah. classic dough. Um, so that's obviously, and and the and the pizzas that are showcased that have the the uh you know the neapolitan style pizzas have this beautiful leoparding effect uh you know in the coloration uh nice puffy cornicion um and it's and it's working so it's long slow fermentation in the neapolitan dough but then you also have a new york style dough so what's different yeah. about that yeah so the new york style um i actually use a blend of three different flowers <clears throat> instead of just just one so yeah <laughs> I have a photo of you tossing that pizza dough up in the air, New York style. <laughs> yeah, that's my New York. So, so yeah, I use a blend of three different flours with that. I use like a, a higher protein bread flour as the as the main the main part of the uh -huh. the main, and then I add a little bit of zero zero just to give it um, a bit of elasticity, oh, and then uh -huh. a small amount of fine semolina flour just to give it a bit of a bit more of a texture and a crunch. So. So, so you actually put some semolina in the dough itself? Yes, just the fine semolina, just like five percent of that, and it just gives it a bit more of a bit more texture, really. Um, so I played around with different percentages of the flowers, and I found that that particular combination worked worked the best. In the recipe for that dough, uh, at the very bottom, after the salt, there's 15 grams of uh, olive oil. Is that olive oil going in the dough, or is that used basically after the dough to keep it from sticking to the to the bowls and stuff like that? Yeah, so with the new with the New York dough, that goes in the dough. In the dough, because yeah. uh, I, I I'm not sure if it's me reading it too quickly, but I couldn't find in the instructions at what point you add the oil to the dough. So the dough the the oil goes in right after you've mixed the salt in with the remaining so water, like the last thing that goes in. Yeah. <laughs> The very, the very last thing before you before you um, make it into a ball and put it away for so, fermentation. So this gives you a stronger dough uh, that allows you to be able to toss it and be a little bit more aggressive yeah. with shaping it. And and you also suggest putting a, a kind of a rim, build, building the rim into it as you shape it, rather than waiting for it to puff up on its own like you would with a with a Neapolitan. Yeah, there's, there's, there's just um, slight differences in, in the techniques that you need with the different styles. So you're not, with the New York dough, you don't want to start from the middle and push all the air out to the crust like you would with a Neapolitan. You want to form your rim first. So you've got, so you, obviously you want a bit more structure in, in, your, in your rim. So it, it, th there's not massive differences in the techniques, but there are, there are small differences which uh -huh. I believe you need to follow. That's great. And and again, um, I'm thinking a lot of these things you figured out on your own just by doing, but then probably also picked up some tips from either books or from videos and things that you've seen other people do. Yeah, very much so. Definitely a combination of the two. Um, the, the first book that I bought was was Tony Gemignani's The Pizza Bible. Which Pizza I, Bible, yeah. yeah. So I learned, I learned a lot from that. And and then just just trying different things like with my – Neapolitan um, pizzas. I don't. I don't follow the traditional Neapolitan slap method when stretching the dough out. I, I, I prefer to hang. 
use gravity and, and have it over my knuckles and and it just works better for me i mean the, well, i was glad that, to see that because that's that's how i do it myself and it definitely goes you know when i see the the pros out there doing their their pizzas and you know and they they're slapping them and i and i can't do that i think you have to yeah. do that every day to get good at that and so Definitely. over the knuckle and hanging it and, uh, you know, letting gravity do some of the work and using your thumbs and all that. It, I was glad to see somebody else, you know, writing about that technique. So yeah, this is what I mean, happens when we, when we figure it out on your own, because just to be clear, you've never worked in a pizzeria, right? I mean, like me, you are self-taught and um, figured it out just through the love of doing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've never worked, worked in a pizzeria. And, and I think <laughs> one thing I, I like to say is hope. People, it gives hope to all those people at home saying, I've never worked on a pizza. How am I going to learn how to do this? How am I going to shape my pizza dough? Definitely. And and, and at the end of the day, the, there's no right or wrong way to shape a dough. I mean, you, you do what you're comfortable with and what works for you. It's whether it's a, the Neapolitan slap or over the knuckles. At, at the end of the day, if you can make good pizza, it doesn't really matter <laughs> no. how you do it. Um, and I recently... I recently, I've just got back from um, Naples, actually, where I, I attended the one-day AVPN Neapolitan course. Oh, wow. And they they obviously are advocates of the Neapolitan slap, and watching <laughs> them, I, I just was blown away by how easy they make it look. And, yeah. Yeah, when you think, do it every day for years and years, you get pretty good at it. <laughs> did you, think did you see anything think, over there? Did you When you were over there in Naples, did you – were you did you see anything that kind of just blew your mind or or some great takeaways from the experience just really good pizza really. I mean, yeah uh, i mean that that's ultimately what i went for um and i went to the the avpn course which which i learned a lot of um it was it was the beginners course so i, I didn't i just take it was more about the experience really uh, uh, and it was brilliant it was a brilliant experience doing it alongside some of the best out there really so yeah it was good were you were you pleased to know that the pizzas that you've been making at home could hold their own against some of the the, the pizzas you had in the center of the pizza universe in naples yeah i mean it's funny that, yeah definitely because i think one on the first night we got there um we, we it was quite late so we only we we just got a takeaway from one of the pizzerias and and i remember my wife saying something like oh this is this isn't as nice as yours or this like <laughs> don't you love that <laughs> it, is, it is very it is very nice to hear those things yeah and, yeah it, it makes it all worthwhile really <laughs> well i see you also have a detroit dough so that's yeah. that style is like growing like crazy and we you know if you had come to pizza expo 10 years ago you would have seen very little detroit pizza and then yeah. we watched over the years uh, get bigger and bigger footprint, you know, and, and now it's sweeping the, the nation and the world, I suppose. So yeah. what's different about that, though? I see you use, again, high-protein flour, but you don't have any semolina in that, just flour, no double yeah. zero flour, um, a, a fair amount of oil, and then a little bit of butter in the dough, right? Oh, that's, not in the that, that's, that's for butter in the pan, so... So the the Detroit the Detroit dough in my book is is aimed at um, someone who is like a new new to pizza making because I think Detroit Detroit dough needs to be a much higher hydration which is obviously a lot more difficult to handle. Um, yeah, I mean some of the recipes out there are 80, 90 percent water, which is very different. So I've I've tried I tried to come up with a with a recipe for the dough which is a lower lower hydration so it's easier to handle but will also give you good results as well so i i, I, I settled on the hydration level of 66 percent for that dough which is higher than my normal neapolitan dough but high enough to give you a nice light dough as well uh, not a sticky dough but more just a, a supple tacky dough <laughs> i think and, uh, uh, and, and just looking to see. I'm, um, well, we'll come back to we'll we'll kind of work through and see uh, some of the the pizzas in the book made with that dough. Uh, but I want to get to this last one because this is one that not too many people know about. We call it the Tonda Romana. What is a yeah. Tonda Romana dough? So, it, Tonda Romana is basically a, 
a much thinner, crispier dough, which is a lot lower hydration, um, which you actually use a rolling pin to get it nice and thin, um, <clears throat> which is a very, when you're doing it for the first time, when you're used to making Neapolitan pizza, it feels like you, it feels like sacrilege getting your <laughs> rolling pin out and, yeah, and yeah. rolling over that crust. But it's, it's just a really nice, it's a much lighter pizza, um, but it, you get a real nice thin and crispy, crispy base. Um, it sounds a lot like what now is kind of the, the hot new trend, which is an old trend coming back in a hot new way, is what we call the bar pizza or the yeah. tavern style pizza. Style. In the yeah. Yeah. So, I think it, I think it's a similar, similar type of dough. Um, do you see actually, these kind of pizzas in, in, in pizzerias in, in England? Not really, no, no. We we don't see much of them, to be honest. And and I kind of wish, since I released the book, the the amount of good feedback I've had about that particular chapter in the book, I, I kind of wish I'd made it a bigger chapter now because I think it's only about four or five different recipes. But yeah, I see four pizzas. Yeah, but still, you were you know you at least you're on trend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's because. It seemed like a very popular part of the book. It seems to be when people have got their hands on the book, that's the one they've gone for first. Well, there's a lot of really great pizzas. I'm just going to quickly read through some of these, and if and if there's anything you want to comment on, uh, because obviously the classic margarita, uh, you've got something called the sunshine margarita, which yeah. can you just briefly say what, what makes it a sunshine margarita? Yeah, so it's basically using um, yellow tomatoes instead of red, which are just a slightly sweeter taste in tomatoes. So it's just something a bit more different visually, but it also you a bit more of a sweeter taste if if that's what you like. I, I don't see that many uh, yellow tomatoes in cans out there on the shelves. Uh, is 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 it something that you have access to, or, and that we should they have? Are they are they're not it's not something you can just go and pick up from your local supermarket you you you've got to be looking more at um like italian suppliers oh, um, I see. Yeah. so you, you can you can i think they're becoming a bit more popular but you, you're not going to just go to the shop and pick one up off the shelf really you also have a a, a lamb kofta and mint pizza well lamb yeah. kofta with mint drizzle pizza which of course you know i'm i'm a big fan of of uh you know middle eastern style foods like this so uh it, it, it it's a great idea to be able to use basically essentially kind of like a lamb sausage meat on yeah. there yeah yeah it works really well and it's like that particular recipe like a lot of the other recipes in the book is the ideas come from like meals that we have as a family so we love having lamb kofta kebabs with with naan bread and salad, and and quite often I'll find myself sitting there eating a meal and thinking, I think this would work on a pizza. So that's where that particular idea came from, and and it it's it's definitely a firm favourite of mine. So these some of these pizzas are really just uh, inventive pizzas that uh, they're not something we're going to see on the menu of a, of most restaurants, but things that you came up with just from. Yeah, playing around with it, translating a favorite dish into a pizza. Yeah, and and, it, and and a lot of them come from um, things like childhood memories. Um, there's there's some like dessert recipes, dessert pizza recipes in there, which that's right. And and some some of them are derived from like when I used to go to my grandparents' house, they they made a lovely dessert like stewed plums and custard and. And this is where all my ideas come from, really, like certain smells and tastes that I remember from childhood memories. And, and it's it's nice to be able to put them on a pizza and, and get them in on the book as well. Exactly. Well, I love the fact that you're, you know, that you're you're doing that. You're making that leap uh, because, look, that's how so many dishes are, are uh, created. But also it just shows you what a versatile product pizza is, that you've got a blank palette. Uh, yeah. you can canvas essentially that you can turn into anything you want and you don't and and while you've got you know you've paid homage to the traditional pieces you're also kind of stepping out of the box i think that's even one of your your phrases on the back of the cover think outside the pizza box and then yeah. and, and i love that you're doing that a couple more i want to uh, call out on i see a fajita fiesta pizza in here 
Uh, and then you're also doing, uh, you do a pizza with hot and creamy indulja, which uh, is one of my favorite. Yeah. I've just, you know, discovered it a few years ago and now never can get yeah. enough of it. It's like you, you you find something like that and you go, I think your line was the, right out of my own head. Where has this been all my life? It's such a great yeah. product. Hundred percent. It's I'd never ever heard of it before I started making pizza, and like now, my freezer's full of it. I've, I've, <laughs> all, I've all it on on hand, and that particular recipe, because it's such a hot, um, a hot like uh, meat, it, spicy. Yeah, yeah. I use it with the burrata, and it and it it works. They work right. together so well, like because it's so creamy and. And it work, they work together so well. That's one of my favorite sides. Well, you got everything from Mexican street corn pizzas to uh, uh, a hot diggity dog pizza, pumpkin spice pizza. Um, of course, you know, mushrooms, 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 um, a chorizo and fennel sausage uh, uh, with ricotta, New York style. I mean, there's like, what do you say, 40, 40 some pizza recipes in here. Um, it's very exciting. I think you've done a great job of putting Thank together you. a book that not only serves your ambassadorship of uni, but stands on its own as just a great yeah. pizza book, you know, that people can use um, no matter what kind of oven they're using and no matter, you know, yeah. and, and, and to make these pizzas in a home oven or whatever their favorite oven is. Um, so congratulations on that. I know how, I know personally how hard it is to put a, a book together and to do yeah. it while you're doing your day job. And, and uh, you know, you, you don't have a pizza restaurant, to pay the, the bills while you're working on this um basically working 24 hours a day when you're coming home from work you you're, you're working on your book so yeah yeah it's like it was just a case of like being clever with your time and and blocking out blocking out periods of the day i used a lot of my work annual leave last year to to make the pizzas and get them photographed and spend time writing the book but at the end of the day, to, to do something like this, you have to make sacrifices. And yeah. and I tried to do it in a way that didn't affect my family too much because I don't want to not spend any time with them at the weekends and stuff. So it, it was just a case of being inventive and managing your time well. Well, at least they get to um, eat the fruits of your efforts. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, congratulations again. Um, you know, you've, in a very short amount of time, You've gone from never making a pizza to being a brand ambassador for the hot new pizza oven to creating your own book. You've done a lot in a short amount of time and uh, kudos to you. Um, yes. I'm glad we got to meet each other at the expo and I'm really thrilled that we've had a chance to talk about this today. Um, so Scott Dealey, uh, for people who want to follow you on Instagram, it's Scott's Pizza Project. Look, look him up there. And the book itself is called The Uni Pizza Project by Scott Dealey, uh, available, I imagine, through all all your booksellers, right? They, they can get this on yeah. Amazon. Yeah. I've, got, I've got all the links on my website, which oh, is... And uh, the website is? Yeah, it's www.scottspizzaproject.com. So you'll find all the links wherever you're ordering from, whatever country. I've, I've got all the links in one place to, to, get, to get you to get you Great. to wait. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you at future expos. Maybe Hopefully. see you in the competition. Uh, yeah, now, yeah. That you, now that you've connected with Tony, don't be surprised if he tries to uh, enlist you to join his pizza champions team and compete in, in Italy, you know, over the next you couple of years. You, know, <laughs> you never know where it's going to go. <laughs> you, don't. you definitely don't. But but great work, and uh, you know, thank you so much for doing all this. Thank you for joining us on Pizza Quest today. You've been on your own Pizza Quest, uh, and uh, yeah. and it parallels the the journeys that so many of our listeners and followers are on. And thanks for sharing it and putting it in in a book form as well as on social media. And uh, keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Thank you for having me on. Really appreciate it. It's been really good. Thank you. And thank all of you for joining us today on Pizza Quest. We will see you on the next episode. Pizza Quest is powered by Simplecast. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. Keep in touch at heritageradionetwork.org slash subscribe.